Okay, so there's a new radio that's kind of new and not to the market. Um, it's kind of new to Stryker, but this radio in one form or another has been around for a while. Um, of course, it's made in China. Uh, it's been previously sold as a... Oh, let's see, the Apollo. Um, I think it's, what, Nanophone... Um, it's what a quiet, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the company that actually makes the boards, or, you know, they're one of the big Chinese manufacturers now, what is it, like Kwaizen or Kwaizon or something like that, but in any case, it looks like what, basically what Stryker has done is they've picked up that series of radios and basically stuck their label on it. Um, it's the same radio on the inside, um, kind of obvious to see when you finally see the circuit board, so... Uh, if you've ever watched Dave Jones on the EEV blog, you're probably familiar with one of his favorite sayings, don't plug it in, tear it apart. So that's exactly what we've done. Um, don't have to bore you with taking out a gazillion screws. It's already been done, so we'll move the box out of the way, and there it is. <laughs> uh, once I get this, this section of the video done, I'll get the radio reassembled, and I'll go over a little bit of the radio, you know, actually power it up and use it. I honestly, I'm very impressed. Um, not easily done for me with black box export radios. Um, I'm so frequently disappointed with the junk that is out there nowadays. Uh, honestly, not so much with this radio. I'm actually kind of surprised. Uh, for starters, they have a, a good heat sink system. Um, they almost kind of took... Uh, it seems like they've almost been taking notes from the ham radio market in the proper way to design a radio, or, you know, business band. This, this radio and design kind of reminds me of business band. Business band radios frequently have a solid die-cast housing, except for maybe a cover. This radio is no exception. So, here is the majority of the radio. Okay? You can see it's all one nice big chunk of die-cast aluminum. Now, if you don't like surface mount, you're not going to like this radio, um, and you're going to like it even less if you ever have to work on it. Um, getting to this side of the board is one thing, but if you ever need to change any of these through-hole components, you got to pull the board out, and this is only a fraction of what uh, parts lie with inside this radio. Yeah, large majority of the parts are on the bottom side, to include the processor. So... Yeah, there are a lot of screws. So you've got screws here. That's for this line of transistors here. You've got all these little screws here. Every one of these gold through plated holes, that gets one of these little screws. And they do that so they can all clamp down around here. And they use that as RF shielding then also. It's very common actually with you know ham radios and business band radios. It's not uncommon to pull one of those boards out and see that. Lots and lots of you know gold plated you know, ground plane traces, and then that's meant to come in contact with the chassis. Um, now, one thing, take careful note. If you are going to work on these, um, does have ceramic insulators for your know, transistors and the MOSFETs over here. But see this little black thing here? Now, when I pulled this board out, that was stuck to the bottom side here. And you can actually see there's some indents on that. So if we look on the underside here, you can see right in this area, that's right where that goes. Make damn sure you do not lose or damage that. That is a heat sink, okay? It's a thermo pad, but it's not a little thin pad like the little sill pad you might be, you know, familiar with using instead of something like this. This is a sponge pad, okay? You can see it's thick. Very spongy, very floppy, it's kind of wet. Um, reminds you of a soggy sponge almost. <laughs> a very dense and heavy soggy sponge. That is a heat sink. That is a very integral part of this radio. I can't overstate that enough. If you put this radio back together and you do not put that pad back in there, this radio might last you a minute or less. I don't know. I'm not going to plug this in without it to find out, but just take my word for it. Very, very integral part. That is not just there to, for vibration. That is a crucial part of the cooling of this radio, and this thing does want run warm. Absolutely no transmitting. You plug this thing in, turn it on, and let it on for any considerable amount of time. It does get warm. Um, now let me make sure this is stuck down good. Uh, the advantage here is another thing. Uh, I've hated about black box radios. These high-powered pieces of junk. 
Where do they always put the, the heat sink on those radios? Bottom of the radio. Or the back to the bottom. This radio is not like that. That is the top of the radio. Somebody finally put on their thinking cap, the light bulb went off, whatever you want to say. Yes, they finally realized heat rises. Yes, it doesn't fall, it rises. So they, they did it right. They've got the, the heat sink part of the radio faces up, so heat rises. You know, thumbs up there. Um, board layout and design looks very nice and compact. Um, like I say, it's a little tricky to get into. Now, there's not actually a lot to the display, uh, you know, encoder, switchboard. So this is the front, okay? So you have the knob that just pulls off. It's a D-shaft. Um, this is also a push button. Um, has really, really nice... I'm sure you can hear that. I really like that encoder. So, Mark, take note. I'm going to have to... Uh, actually, let me see here. Don't see any numbers on this, so I am going to have to remove this uh, for you, <laughs> save you from having to buy one of these radios. I will remove this and see if I can get some manufacturer's marking off the back side of that, because that has some really nice detents. That's one of the biggest problems I have with a lot of rotary encoders. They turn so blasted smooth. They're just, you know, I want to, when I change channels, I want to know it, because this does not have a VFO. We'll get into the frequencies and everything this radio does. Um, and now it is AM and FM. It's not it's not sideband. But yeah, I've really that's I'm impressed by that. That's so many radios nowadays just fall flat on their face. That's the first thing I grab is a channel knob and it's just it's like, oh man. So yeah, thumbs up there. Um so yeah, there's really probably no reason to ever have to pull the front out of this, you know, unless you're replacing the rotary encoder, the switch, the RJ45 connector. So yes, they are using a modular plug for the microphone. They are not using, you know, your normal like four, five, six, eight pin plug. So it is a modular plug, uh, just like your you know, data cables for your modem and whatnot or your computer. So standard plug. Um, yeah, I guess that's good or bad. For me, it doesn't bother me. I have the proper crimping tools for these things. But if you're not familiar with doing these, yeah, I can see that might be a problem down the line for some people. Um, not a problem for me. Uh, keeps the, you know, size format very small. But the, so there's not a lot here. Has uh, does have one flat flex ribbon cable connector. That's the interconnect from the main board up to here. That's right here. If you ever take these out, they do have lock tabs. You can see how that pushes in and pulls out. So, you know, once I put this radio back together, I'll slide the ribbon cable in there, and then you push the lock tab down, and that compresses together then and hold, holds the cable in there so it doesn't fall out. But, uh, yeah, not a lot to look at on here. Um, all the magic happens down here. Uh, so, to, like I said, to get this out, a shitload of screws all over the board. The screws for the semiconductors you will have to remove the antenna connector, because it comes through, you can see right there, there's a hole in the back side, so it sticks through. This, the grounding lug is soldered right down to the board right here, and then you have all they did here, this isn't actually wire, which is good, don't ever have to worry about that breaking, it's really heavy. That's just a, uh, uh, like a header pin, a really long header pin, and they just have it bent over, and that's your actual antenna, the actual RF energy is going to come out, and that connects to the center conductor there. So you're going to have to desolder that and remove that connector, take all the screws out, pull this out. Like I said, just remember when you pull this out, that sill, you know, that, that heat transfer sill pad there could be stuck to that. Just make sure you don't lose that little guy. But uh, very densely packed. Um, like I said, if you don't like surface mount, you're not going to like this. So those are not solder blobs. All of those are components down there. And they are tiny. Now, it looks like pretty much every, you know, most of the spaces have been used on this. Oh, and as I was saying, you can see right there, Apollo. <laughs> Matter of fact, it says what Apollo. Ah, it's just got some numbers and letters after it, so yeah, PCB. But yeah, you, so you can see, like I say, there, the Apollo, right there. <laughs> So yes, this this is obviously is not a striker radio. It's been around for a little while. Striker's just picking it up, but I think that's fine. But the board looks like good FR4 board. Um, looks like good high quality board. It is very rigid. Um, that's another thing I like to see. It's something you know, a lot of these export radios nowadays. Man, they are the boards in those things are so flimsy. This one, yeah, you you can see it's nice thick. Lots of fiberglass in there, really rigid. Um, now, I kind of have mixed feelings. 
this is the audio amp I see. I don't know if I can even get the ref there you go. Get the reflection where you can see the part number on it. Yeah, but the problem I see there is see those two letters YD. I've had a bad experience with YD. <laughs> And I don't mean from a durability standpoint, audio amps go out. That can happen. Cobra used a, not, not this IC, but they used one of the inline or SIP package ICs. Uh, they used a YD series uh, audio amp IC in a lot of the Cobra 29s. The more recent ones, uh, I think it's the Cobra 29 Bluetooth, I believe is what had that. Um, don't take my word on that. It is one of the 29 models. I just, for some reason, the 29 Bluetooth rings. But it could be one of this regular 29 LTD classic styles. or it, it was one of them, though. It's no longer made. They made that radio. They used that IC for like a year or two. It's gone. You cannot get it. So if that radio, if the audio amp IC, and I have a few of those radios here that have bad audio ICs in them, and there's nothing else wrong with them, there's no replacement. So... I'm probably going to buy a hundred of those just to be... Now, granted, if I buy a hundred, I can pretty much guarantee you they'll make those things until the end of time. Uh, but it's just been my experience. When I don't stock up on something, they don't make... They stop making it you know, a few months or a year later. So, yeah, I'm, I'll stock up on those things just to have them. And besides that, when you buy in large quantities like 50 or 100, you usually get pretty good pricing. But, uh, yeah, so I, now there is one area here right here you can see there's a lot of solder pads there are no components on there so it looks like maybe in some other application or version um, there might be another option there you can see there's room for what is that eight pin uh, flat pack I see there and then a bunch of you know other components probably resistors and capacitors but other than that it looks very unlike most of your export radios that will commonly have only half of the holes filled yeah, this isn't like that. Other than that one little area right there, um, yeah, this looks very populated. Not a lot of empty holes. Um, so, you know, it's controlled by, this is the MCU right here. So just be sure anytime you're working on this kind of stuff, proper, you can see here, I've got my you know, anti-static strap on, anti-static mat. Uh, just be careful when you're working on this kind of stuff. Um, you know, take proper ESD precautions. But, uh, yeah, so... It, the, the serviceability is going to be a problem, though. Uh, I actually sat here with this thing sitting on the bench like that, looking at it, and thinking to myself, um, you know, if some of the components up here break, not a, you know, go bad, not a problem. I can get to a lot of them. Uh, is, or it's not so much getting to them. I don't mind having to take it apart to get to parts. The problem is diagnosing. I can diagnose everything on this side of the board from this side of the board. What happens if something down here goes bad? How do you get to it? Got to remember, it's attached to this big heat sink here. All of these, you know, and that's very critical. <laughs> it's got to be on a heat sink. How in the hell am I going to work on that powered up out of the radio? Now, I can attach it to the front panel. That's very simple. Ribbon cable, I can connect that. Power cord's permanently attached. I can temporarily reconnect, the, you know, an antenna to the board find it here it's right here you know if I need to transmit or receive um, but yeah how would I get under here to diagnose things you know transistors bad burned up coil voltage regulator you know anything yeah so I I'm almost gonna have to make a test jig for this or you know a, a repair fixture um, now I have God, I've got almost an entire parts cabinet. I don't mean a little you know, with drawers. I mean a wall cabinet. It's like half the size of a normal wall locker parts cabinet full of heat sinks. And I've got some heat sinks. I got somewhere one time. They're like 12 by 12. They're big big squares. They're about that thick. Real, really nice. I might end up having to take one of those out to the shop, stick it on the milling machine, and mill out some type of test jig. Um kind of make it, you know, so it would come in, you know, maybe out about this far on either side, but it would come in, and I'll have a cutout, like in this area, and then maybe a little bridge over here, because I'm also going to want to heat sink these three components right here. Um, then I can, you know, put a sill pad back in, but that'll allow me to clamp this down to a heat sink, 
you know, put heat transfer grease back on here, you know, insulating pads and everything, install it in the test jig, but then I'll be able to actually probe this and, and work on it out of the radio because, yeah, I, it's the only problem is I see if you try working on this out of the radio as it is, you're, you know, if it ain't too badly broke, if you try powering this thing up like this, yeah, it's going to be seriously broke soon because you're going to be overheating parts. Um, so there you go. There's just a quick view of the inside. Um, you know, this is AM FM, so it does have, uh, let's see, the FM IC was, I believe, that one. I think it was the AA32416. Uh, yes. So that right there, and interestingly enough, that's actually for a cordless phone. It's an AA32416. It's a 16-pin FM IF detector, specifically made for cordless cell phone, or for not but for cordless phones. Um, now, a lot of people say, well, why in the hell are they using phone parts in here? It's just an FM IF detector. It doesn't really matter what it was specifically made for. Um, yeah. They use 455. <laughs> it's, it's CB radios for a reason. Back in the old days, that was a common IF frequency, and CB came around. They just borrowed parts that were already on the market. No difference here. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, the processor, the six, I'm not sure if it's the 16 or 32-bit, but... Uh, that's a uh, that MCU also has uh, 512 kilobytes of uh, built-in flash, ISP, IP, Ethernet. Does I mean it can be a USB 2.0 host, 10 bit ADC DAC. So you know it has um, DAC and ADC controls built into it. Really cram packed in that uh, processor right there. Um, there's actually that right there is a <clears throat> two wire serial prom sitting right off of it. Um, there's the uh, crystal, that little silver spot right there. That's the crystal for the processor. Um, like I say, the only thing I'm worried about is that. Now, that may be reliable. Now, they call this a 5.8-watt <laughs> uh, audio amp. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> you try running that thing at 5.8 watts, continuous audio output, you're going to let the smoke out. But uh, it may, I'm sure it, for this radio, especially when you consider... Let me grab the actual bottom cover the speaker in this thing yeah, it's it, it is small but uh and surprisingly enough look at that apollo <laughs> so uh, and this this is plastic which is fine um cut down on cost and weight but it is it is a nice heavy piece of plastic so i think that's going to be fine but uh yeah so it's not i mean this speaker is what shit they rate that at three watts i find that but honestly it actually sounds good for as small as it is it actually doesn't sound bad. Of course, it sounds better on an external speaker, but I was pleasantly surprised to find that that little speaker does actually put out decent audio. Uh, another thing, I'm going to have to stock up on a few of these. This exact size speaker, the depth, diameter to fit in here because it's glued in. So, yes, if you ever have to take this speaker out, it's got to you know, glue the whole way around it. But I'll have to get a few of those to keep in stock. It might just be cheaper and easier just to buy a couple of replacement bottom covers <laughs> that already have the speaker in them. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, oh, one other interesting thing was... Oh, uh, where is that little critter at? Right there. There is a digital... Uh, this little guy right here, that's actually a little 8-pin package right there. You can see it. That is a uh, digital volume control. So that's actually what controls the volume in this. So that is going to be controlling the audio amp. But uh, there you go. Now, there appears to be a RF shield. I'm not going to say it's missing. Maybe in another application they used an RF shield. Or they initially thought they might need an RF shield here and decided not to do, do with one. But, uh, yeah, I'm not really seeing anything in here that would actually be noisy. Yeah, I'm not sure why they had that. I mean, that's where your power comes in, a couple caps, and that's it. There's there's not like there's a DC to DC converter or anything here. Um, so I'm not sure why they even had the footprint for a shield there. Maybe in another application, possibly. But uh, there you go. So let me get this uh, all reassembled. Lots of little screws. <laughs> and uh, we'll get this thing fired up, and I'll show you how it actually works. Okay, so the radio's all back together except for the four screws in the bottom cover. I thought well, before I put that on, somebody's going to ask, "How do you do a channel modification on these?" Uh, that's probably the only thing that uh, anyone should ever do to one of these, unless you know what you're doing in here. 
Um, very simple to do. You'll need a, uh, the screws are torque, so you're going to need a, a torque screwdriver. So it's a T8, okay? Take those four screws out there. It's actually sitting right there. Pop the cover off. Um, you can unplug the speaker. They were nice enough to put a, a plug on there. It's one thing I hate about a lot of radios. They don't have plugs. I love that. Um, the modification to unlock this for channels. Now, they have it marked on the board as L45, like it's an inductor. Uh, it's just a piece of wire, okay? See that wire right there? It's cut in half. That's it. Take the cover off, snip that wire in half, and then once I get it back together and hooked up, I'll show you um, the button press you have to go through. So what you have to do is, is actually hold the function, P6, and then turn the power on. And that'll take you into where you can select what type of bands that you want. You can set this up for strictly 10 meter, where it covers from 28 to 29.7. Um, you can hook it up for full frequency coverage or CB only. So you actually have three, three selections. But yeah, once you do that modification right there, that opens it up for those three, three different uh, channel modes. So let me uh, get the cover back on, get the screws back in, and we'll get her powered up, and I'll show you some of the features of the radio. Uh, like I say, so far I'm impressed. I can't say I've really seen, I mean, a few tiny little things I might go, eh, about. But overall, I'm, I'm happy with it. I mean, um, and this this is not like a freebie from Stryker. I had to buy this. This, you know, cash out of my pocket. So, um, you know, it's my money. So, uh, oh, I do have to resolder the antenna connector there before I forget. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm so far, man, I'm, I'm happy with this little thing. Uh, very very well put together and designed. Um, I think maybe the black market radios, uh, the rest of them could take some, uh, you know, design notes off of this. So let me get her hooked up and I'll be back.